Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zef from Z Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I am at the Retro Outdoors Gathering which is in the Midlands of the United Kingdom and in this particular video what I'm going to be doing is having a talk to Wayland who's part of the Steam Tent Cooperative. Now if you're not familiar with the actual Steam Tent Cooperative we will be talking about that in a moment with Wayland but what stood out with Wayland was the incredible setup that he's got and it's all about retro outdoors vintage equipment and he's got an incredible unique look and flavor to what he does so without a further ado i hope you enjoy the rest of this video hi there wayland hello there um i appreciate you taking a little bit of time out for me to record this video so i want to start off with the actual steam tent cooperative could you explain a little bit about what kind of what that involves well the idea was uh, that many of us had come out of uh, bushcraft but also some of us had come out of uh, a reenactment background and we were looking for a way of sort of uh, reintroducing some of the older equipment or the, the retro equipment if you like uh, back into camping and outdoor life and we came across this as an idea to sort of have something not particularly authentic as to a particular period. You know, we're not exactly like Victorian, we're not exactly pre-war or anything like that. But the idea was to just create an atmospheric camp that, you know, people could enjoy and uh, uh, sort of get some of this stuff off pub walls and into actual use. <laughs> and in terms of yourself as well, a little bit about your background and what's brought you to kind of what you do today. Well, I've spent many years involved with reenactment, uh, mainly through sort of Viking Age reenactment and things like that. And getting older, like many people, I need to wear glasses now. So, um, unfortunately, the reenactment society that I was a member of basically said, well, I'm sorry, but you can't join in if you're wearing glasses. Uh, so, 30 years of experience went out the door there and I needed something else to do. And uh, this, you know, is what came about. Uh, it's one of the reasons that we are fairly casual about you know, authenticity, as it were, because, you know, we don't want to exclude people that have, you know, got, many, you know, sort of difficulties with one thing or another. Um, you know, we like to be inclusive as far as possible. And starting off with your shelter here, would you like to talk about the actual shelter itself and then we can go well, the shelter the itself was um, made by uh, uh, Paul Bushcraft and it's uh, based on a baker's tent. Um, it's designed so that it can be sort of opened at the front with various different sort of configurations. But um, we made a few minor modifications on it just to sort of uh, tweak it for the use that we want. At the moment it's fairly closed up because we've had a lot of rain. Uh, but normally I keep you know, at least two sides open and it makes a nice, quite a nice um, showpiece really. You can see what you know we've got going on. It's actually, you know, let's face it, one of the things we like to do with all these bits of old stuff is show it off. And, you know, sort of, uh, hey, look what I've just found in a boot sale or something <laughs> like that, you know. And in terms of the shelter, just from the, a brief look on the outside, um, so just a bit of a sideways perspective here. So, OK, so it drops down towards the back and that's your sleeping compartment, is that's that correct? Right, yes. Um, so you don't need as much height at the back for, for sleeping. Um, normally, you know, it's designed so that it can be closed up. So either of these sides can close across uh, what we would tend to think of as the front of the tent is actually here, uh, the part supported on, on the beams. So you can close it right back to that, but you've got an awning that comes out the front, or you can extend the whole tent forward by um, opening up both sides. And is that, what, what material is that? Uh, this is a cotton canvas. Um, we prefer cotton canvas, although, you know, in, in some circumstances, like we've got the weather this weekend, you know, we are using a few sort of uh, synthetic tarps over the top of some of it. But um, cotton canvas gives us the kind of atmosphere that we're looking for, that sort of old school camp sort of type thing. 
Um, I, so, I suppose, you know, a lot, a lot of us tend to think about some of the old expedition camps, some of the old safari camps and things like that. And, and I suppose that's the kind of atmosphere that we're looking for as a whole thing. And starting off with the actual inside then, where would you like to begin? Well, <laughs> where do you begin? Um, a lot of these things I'd sort of collected over the years, um, you know, and were, were quite... Yeah, just interesting things, you know, things like, you know, you've got Stonebridge um, folding lantern there. Um, this was designed so it folded up, and it was a design really came from the First World War, um, or a little bit before the First World War, in fact. But, um, you know, things like that on their own, you don't sort of, you know, don't, don't say anything, but once you put them into a, an environment like this, they become you know, a, a sort of a, a um, an interest, a, a point of interest really, you know, through the whole thing. And I suppose that's what you'd say of a lot of the different things here, you know, we've got from old sundials, these are old stoves and things like that. The complaints department, we don't get very many complaints. <laughs> um, the chuck box. Uh, started out as uh, actually an IKEA drawer draw unit, and um, that sort of provided the uh, the rigidity in the centre of it that I could then build the rest around it. And this has the advantage that uh, I can sort of move it from the vehicle, put it here, open it up, and it's th there. It's all done, ready to go. Um, and you know, I've sort of done that with a few things. You know, the writing slope. That was actually a restoration. Um, came to me in sort of slightly sad condition, and uh, I actually sort of went went through and did as sensitive as possible a, a restoration on it, and you know that's all in in good shape now. Um, of course, every Victorian gentleman on on safari would take his writing slope with him. Um, on this side, I've got a, a, a ditty box which contains, you know, just a variety of the small things that you need around. That um, you know, place to keep your pocket watch, place to uh, keep your pipe, uh, things like that. You know, things that otherwise might get sort of misplaced around a camp. And uh, there's a good, good selection of lanterns around and um, some picnic stoves. I'm a fair, you know, I, I get involved with craft work of various sorts, so I, I'm always kind of looking at um, things that need a bit of restoration. Sometimes they need a bit of, you know, sometimes almost a complete rebuild. Uh, so there's a mixture really here of stuff that's started off just needing a bit of fettling up and other stuff that was needed quite major. But that's a big thing you do, isn't it? You go from the range of making your own kit to actual restoration of existing items. Yes, yes. I, I mean, I've always had a, a craft background, really. Um, I suppose a lot of that came from reenactment, needing to sort of make specialist equipment for different periods of history. Uh, not sort of thing you can buy from the shops or uh, stuff like that. Or, although these days there are specialist traders, but back when I started, you know, just make it yourself or, you know, not at all. And, you know, the, the skills that I've learned doing that have enabled me to sort of approach problems from lots of different angles. You know, do I approach this as a leatherwork job or do I approach this as a metalwork job or something like that? And that sometimes leads to some creative sort of solutions. To uh, speaking of which, right, and, and kind of tying in with that, I've noticed your pouch systems over here. Oh, the ditty tools. bag, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's become famous in its own right, really, that. Um, I came across uh, an American company that was making some beautiful ditty bags and I thought, oh, that looks very nice, I've got fancy something like that. And when I eventually got through to the page where, you know, it, it actually started mentioning prices, it was thousands of dollars, <laughs> which I thought, well, maybe I don't want it that much, but <laughs> there's some ideas on there that I could sort of incorporate and, and make my own. Um, so that was made during one of the bush moots in actual fact. You know, I spent most of the time at the bush moot when I wasn't doing other workshops. You know, just sat around the camp and, and making things. Um, 
And yeah, I've, I've norm normally got some job on this thing. Uh, funny enough, this weekend I haven't haven't got anything in in hand, but uh, normally I do have something, you know, that I'm twiddling at or making or, you know, uh, retro retrofitting, whatever. Uh, one question I do have is your actual bed system. Mm. Um, so could you talk a little bit about kind of what you got with your bedding system? Well, at the, at the base of it, we've got it's actually uh, well, it's a, a pre-war stretcher it's an army stretcher um, very solid wooden frame uh, with canvas across it and uh, sprung loaded at each end to, to hold it apart uh, it normally had longer handles on the end for obviously carrying uh, casualties uh, but in this particular case i had to take the handles off it wouldn't quite fit across the length of the tent it was about an eight foot stretcher and this is a seven foot wide tent uh, but I had two of them, so I've still got the older one, sort of in good nick. Um, on top of that, this is actually, um, it's known as a palace, or palace. And this is, you know, what a, a medieval soldier would have been sleeping on. So it's basically a padded mattress. Um, and that's there. Then I've got my actual sort of bedroll here, which is a mixture of blankets and canvas over the top. Uh, the canvas isn't really needed in here, but uh, you know, if you're around a fireplace or something like that, it gives a bit of you know extra cover on there. And I've got some uh, blankets there if I need them at the other end. That's just my blanket coat on top of it there at the moment. The blanket coat is lovely. Is that something you've made as well? Um, it started off as a piece made by um, a friend of mine called Cliff who uh, uh, used to sell them as two dogs sort of jackets. Um, I quite liked the fact that he made this one from a striped blanket and that kind of caught my eye. Um, I've added to it the uh, decorated tape and the leather work on it. Um, <laughs> we're always joking the fact that, that you know, even if I buy something, it rarely stands very long before getting modified in some <laughs> way. You know, I sort of uh, modify just about everything I end up with, really. Um, even you know, even some of these, I sort of got into a phase of doing barge work and you know the uh, canal sort of barge. Painting. Oh, yes, yes. Um, yeah. So, you know, I <laughs> went through a phase where every piece of enamel that I had that wasn't already white was, you know, ended up getting painted. So, just to kind of wrap up, I've got a question for you, and it's mm -hmm. also on a personal level as well, is kind of the conventional way of people who are doing bushcraft and the outdoors and whatnot, it's all about, in one way or another, buying kit off a shelf or ready to go and use. So kind of what are some tips and pointers and advice you can encourage the people to start thinking a little bit outside the box about how they approach, you know, quote unquote equipment? Well, I mean, I think if, if you were aiming to go in the direction that we are going in, uh, start looking at old boot fairs and antique markets and, and things like that, you know, for the older stuff, which is, you know, very well made and... Uh, things like that. If it's uh, just you know pure bu bushcraft that you're interested in, I mean you know you couldn't really say it better than Maud Kachansky, which was you know carry less by knowing more. Um, when I'm actually involved in doing bushcraft sort of stuff, you know I can go extremely light. You know, but uh, this is kind of almost a reaction going the other way from that, really. You know. Is that what it is then? So with all of this, it's, it's a, for you the aesthetic, the kind of the feelings around yeah, it? It's the, it's the atmosphere, the aesthetic, um, you know, putting a use to something, you know, like a, a beautiful piece of engineering like that. Um, you know, a lot of people would get something like that and they would stick it on a pub wall and, and think that that meant something. Well, what it, you know, what really means something is lighting it up and using it. And, uh, you know, it's just a shame that these wonderful pieces of engineering sometimes aren't used. I mean, if I can take you over here and show you. This is, uh, this is a clockwork bottle jack. It wasn't spinning for a while, but it seems to be now. Yeah, we might need to put a wheel on it to give it more momentum. 
Now this is a hundred years old or over a hundred years old and it continued to work you know pretty well until last year when it was starting to get a little bit sort of finicky. Uh, so I you know I stripped it apart and, and all it needed was a new silk skein on it and uh, now we've got it working again. But th something like this stuck on a mu museum wall or a, a pub wall doesn't really mean anything but here in a few hours time it'll mean that we've actually properly roasted a piece of meat um, you know such a simple piece of equipment um, can be reused and, and actually put into some valuable use no that's fantastic now thank you for sharing that Wayland. Yeah. um so the final question I have for you, if people wanted to kind of look into and find out more about the work that you do, um, where is the best place for them to check you out online? Well, I mean, to find our group here, uh, the easiest place to look would be steamtent.uk. Uh, that will get you to the website and from there you can you know, find links to the various groups that we're in. We're also on Facebook as uh, Steam Tent Cooperative or The Steam Tent Cooperative. Um, a search for that will probably find it as well. Excellent. Wayden, once again, I really do sincerely appreciate you taking the time uh, to allow me to record You're this video welcome. and also to allow me into your space, your fantastic space. I think you guys are the highlight of, <laughs> of the weekend. I, I don't think that. Right? But, but especially uh, at night time when all you guys have your lanterns on and oh, everything. We do like a bit of light around the place. <laughs> Gosh, it just looked magical. We're pitch white right opposite and we're like, yeah. oh God, check those guys out. <laughs> So, but once again, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time out. Uh, and well. for everyone else, I will put links below that you've mentioned in the video, and I highly recommend you go check Wayland out. So, Wayland, thank you once again. All right, thank you. <laughs> So there you have it my friends, that is a wrap for this video. I really do appreciate you watching and I really do hope you enjoyed this video. For me it was really insightful to see what Wayland had set up and how he approached his philosophy for when he's camping outdoors. What I'm going to do, as I mentioned just a moment ago, I will put links below to Wayland's you know, links that he mentioned. I would highly recommend you go check that out if you had any value from this video whatsoever. And be sure to join their Facebook group as well. What I'm also going to do is put a link to this actual event that we're at, which is a retro outdoors event um, so I will we'll put a link to that where as a video I've done of the entire event uh, and the kind of shenanigans that we're getting up to here so guys as always I hope whatever you're doing you have a blessed day a blessed week ahead for myself set outdoors peace out <laughs>